Peter Johnson, aged seven, spends a great deal of time in trams. Unlike his father, who prefers to drive. Wherever he goes. Just look at that, will you? All they do is cause congestion and block up the road. But surely it's the other way around, Mr. Johnson. It's you who's blocking the tram. Well, that's not the point, old man. The roads belong to cars. If I had my way, I'd get rid of trams altogether. All right, we'll give your recommendation a try. Let's see. Yes, this should do. There, that's fine. Now let's take the tram out of the picture. It certainly leaves a nice wide space. Ah, but we forgot. That tram was carrying 90 passengers, Mr. Johnson. How do we get those 90 passengers to work? Now that their tram is gone. Simple, old man. Let them drive cars. Hmm. Uh, thank you. Now, statistics show that each car driven to the city contains an average of one and a quarter people. Now, one and a quarter into 90... Yes, that's about 70 cars. Good heavens. As you can see, these cars, even when they're jammed head to tail, take up 20 times more road space than the tram did. Multiply them by several thousand peak period tram trips a day, and you'd have one third of a million additional cars on the road. There'd be such traffic chaos that none of us would ever get to work. Oh no, Mr. Johnson. Trams don't cause traffic congestion. They help to minimize it. Melbourne's densely populated areas need trams. 